Demon hunters, warring gods, and forgotten worlds await with TNM Comics. Click the links below to enter their fantastical realm. Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. Well, you know what they say about the best laid plans. I had expected the first part of my holiday musical roundup to cover Fox's live production of A Christmas Story, but due to other conflicts, I wasn't able to watch the broadcast and haven't caught up yet. So instead, we're going to be looking at a couple of film musical releases, one that just came out and one that you really should have seen by now. Hola. Although Pixar has had an unusually good knack for the use of music in its films, Toy Story 2's When She Loved Me and Michael Giacchino's fantastic retro jazz score for The Incredibles are among my personal highlights, Coco represents the studio's first real musical. And true to Pixar form, it's not done in the singing princesses and dancing sidekicks mode, but is something more grounded. All of the songs in Coco are diegetic, which is unsurprising considering how many of the characters' motivations are rooted in music. The primary theme is Kristen and Bobby Lopez's Remember Me, and it reflects one of the key linchpins of the plot. Souls in the land of the dead need their living loved ones to honor and keep their memories in order to maintain their existence. I love the way this song develops over the course of the movie, changing in color and resonance as its meaning and place in the plot evolves. Remember me, though I have to travel far, remember me, each time you hear a sad guitar, know that I'm with you the only way that I can be, until you ring my arms again, remember me. Remember Me is the Lopez's sole contribution to the score, the rest of the original songs are by Jermaine Franco and Adrian Molina. Their songs have a bright folklorico style and an instantly winning charm, particularly Everyone Knows Juanita and Un Poco Loco. You make me un poco loco, un poquitito loco, the way you keep me guessing, I'm nodding and I'm guessing, I'll count it as a blessing. There's also a nod to traditional music with La Llorona, which is performed at a significant point in the climax. I like how they scored this song popularized during the Mexican Revolution with a modern pop beat. It's a neat way of bridging the generation gap at the center of the story. Giacchino returns for the underscore, and it's up to his usual high standards. Again, the regional sound is at the forefront, with guitar, trumpets, and marimba featuring heavily over subtle orchestral underpinnings. This gives the soundtrack a vibrant, nuanced color, and a mix of joy and tenderness. Coco is a gorgeous celebration of Mexican culture, and it's not surprising that music forms such a vital part of that celebration. If you haven't seen it yet, you should check it out. I'm pretty sure that Frozen television special is no longer playing beforehand. The Greatest Showman, meanwhile, had a couple of hurdles in its way going in. First, a perfectly good musical about the life of circus mogul P.T. Barnum already exists. Second, the songs are by Benj Pasek and Justin Paul, a songwriting team that it's taken me a while to warm up to. Not because they're not good, but because their successes seem to come despite being up against material I find more rewarding musically and dramatically. On the other hand, Hugh Jackman is always enough to make me give something the benefit of the doubt, and the first song released, This Is Me, helped with that. Another Nothing like a good Power to the Outcasts anthem to get you energized, especially when it's fiercely belted out by Kiala Settle. 
but I wasn't really excited for the movie until the second song released, The Greatest Show. The smooth seductiveness of the verse leads into a bright, joyous chorus and perfectly fits Hugh Jackman's voice. It's fitting that this is the first song in the movie because it speaks to the audience outside of the film as well as the one inside it. This isn't reality, this is a show, so just sit back and enjoy it. Most of the music in this film tends towards the generically anthemic, but there are a couple of notable standouts. I really liked Jackman and Zac Efron's duet, The Other Side, a patter-heavy argument that has some fun playing around with metaphors and parallel lyrics. So thanks, but no, I think I'm good to go, cause I quite enjoy the life you say I'm trapped in. But my favorite piece in the score, and one that I feel is destined to become the unsung gem of the movie, is Michelle Williams' solo tightrope. It's a delicate, nimble waltz, with excellent tonal painting creating a balance between exhilaration and anxiety. Hand in my hand, and we promise to never let go. We're walking a tightrope high in the sky, we can see the whole world. The songs, with some fantastic staging and winning performances by Jackman, Efren, and Settle behind them, give The Greatest Showman's story what energy it has. The plot is otherwise rushed and hokey, not to mention a huge whitewash of P.T. Barnum's more problematic aspects. Either you'll hate this movie for being false and manipulative, or like me, you'll kind of enjoy it on a guilty pleasure level. It's the kind of story the real Barnum would tell about himself, with everything good and bad that that implies. I'm Diva, I know the score, and now, so do you. Oh, so